phenomenon. So we have derived the MM equation in our previous class. Today we will modify or rearrange this MM equation to derive some linear plots. Okay, I also told you in our previous class that why we need to get some linear plots because uh, this MM equation, if plotted, it, it will result into a hyperbola. This is called right-handed hyperbola. So this hyperbolic plot, if you look here, Okay, so if you look here, if you try to find the V max value, uh, so because it is a linear plot here, and there is not a very much difference if you try to uh, differentiate th these three lines. Okay, so one, two, three. These are having very less difference. Okay, so the second thing is, if you try to find the KM value with the help of these three different values of V max, so you will not able to uh, find the exact uh, values of the km because the vmax values are very much uh, close to each other now what is the solution to this problem you need to make a linear plot if you uh, if you should have a line here so it is easy to trace all the three values uh, and they will have much difference between them as compared to this uh, hyperbola. Therefore, you need to uh, rearrange this MM equation into a line plot so that you are able to uh, get the Vmax value and the Km value more exactly, more appropriate values of Km and Vmax. Therefore, we need to rearrange the MM equation. Okay, so now what is the uh, Procedure: How we need to rearrange these uh, 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 this equation. So first of all, we need to remember this equation. This is called the MM equation, where V is equal to V max into substrate concentration divided by Km plus substrate concentration. Now, first of all, what will you do? You will do double. Okay, so see here. Okay, fine. So here. So you need to transform this Michaelis Menten equation or MM equation, and this is called double reciprocal uh, plot or equation. Okay, so this you <clears throat> know, this is the initial velocity that is the uh, weight actually. V naught is equal to V max into substrate concentration, Km plus substrate concentration. This is the same equation as you have seen in your Pathfinder. So it is given here only differences in the pathfinder they actually they have uh, represented the initial velocity like v whereas in leninger they have represented this rate as v naught that the initial velocity or initial reaction velocity or rate of the reaction okay otherwise this equation both the equations are same now you need to transform it you need to do double uh, reciprocal uh, okay so First of all, what will you do? You will divide both sides. So, okay, so if you, okay, so this value, this V naught, you can write as one upon V naught. If you are writing this like this, then you need to uh, rearrange this side also. So both the values Km plus S will go up and V max and S will, go, uh, will move. Okay, so they will be denominator. Now, this one upon v zero. You need to, when you need to uh, rearrange this. This is km because there is a plus sign. So km divided by this complete value v max into substrate concentration. Then there is a plus sign. Then there is s and there is v max into substrate concentration. Okay, let me annotate this if you are not able to understand. Okay, so so what we are doing. We are transforming our MM equation. So while transforming this equation, we are not doing anything. We just uh, uh, just uh, doing the reverse of this. Means uh, double reciprocal plot. We are deriving the double reciprocal equation first to draw the plot. So what will uh, what we are doing? We are dividing. Uh, we are uh, moving this v zero as uh, one upon v zero. 
and since we are moving this side we are rearranging this side we need to rearrange this side as well so what will happen to this side when we are uh, writing this v v not as 1 upon v not then this will this uh, side will uh, this will go up and this will be reversed okay so this km plus self state concentration divided by v max into self state concentration now since there is a plus sign so what can you do this is a km divided by v max into substrate concentration plus s and there is v max into substrate concentration now simply what will you do okay so first of all you will cancel the substrate concentration okay so remove this one now simply what will you having uh, it is uh, it will be simplified into uh, another equation that 1 upon v or simply 1 upon v or v not whatever you say a k m upon v max and there is a substrate concentration okay plus 1 upon v max now you know uh, because we want to uh, plot a li line equation or uh, we need to plot a line curve there, therefore we should know the line equation y is equal to mx plus c sorry so we should uh, know the value okay so so it will become y is equal to mx plus c if you know the line equation okay so simply this is the y axis this is the slope m so the slope m will be km upon v max Okay, let me annotate again okay so so this will be our m value that is the slope of this line then there is 1 upon s if you simply write it as x axis and there is a c value that is y intercept so it will become 1 upon v max that is the c value actually so in these equations when you are transforming mm equation you should know the two important uh, things one is the slope of that particular uh, line and then there is a y intercept okay so this is called y intercept now if you want to know the x intercept also you need to put this value this y as 0 and if you put this 0 then you are able to calculate the value of x okay so let us do something okay the problem is actually i cannot move the pdf until and unless i remove these all drawings first so what will happen if you remove this value okay so uh, put zero instead of y so we can plot one more so y will become zero and equal to and we are having this okay so simply you can write uh, 1 upon v max is equal to minus km v max into substrate concentration okay then if you rearrange this equation for s what will you get so simply you can write the substrate concentration as okay so substrate concentration as is equal to okay so first of all uh, you need to put this as zero then if you rearrange this this will become a sign equal here but if you put a equal sign here then it will become a minus okay so now we are solving it for uh, substrate concentration s therefore okay so first of all you will uh, put this v max and km to this side so simply you can put a multiplication sign and there is one upon s so either you uh, take this s to this side or you will move this towards this side okay suppose this is moving to uh, the other side then okay so this s will have a minus value or 
it will have am divided by v max very hard to write like this because i'm using a touch pad to write okay so this will become v max now this v max will go up up and ultimately it will be cancelled so it I, if i put uh, v max here so this v max will come here and ultimately what will happen this v max will be cancelled out okay so what you have you have minus km so if you move this minus sign to this side so ultimately you will have x intercept also so now what you have you have x intercept and this x x intercept will be equal to minus km okay from here and you also have m value so m the slope km upon v max you have the y intercept c what is the y intercept this is 1 upon v max now you can plot an equation okay with all these values in your hand so remove all this and we need to plot an equation okay so the equation you can see from here so we have discussed this this fine so this plot which is uh, derived from uh, this equation this is the line we will work equation that is 1 upon v or v not is equal to km upon v max into substrate concentration uh, okay so km upon v max into substrate concentration is written like this because this is the m and this is the x value and there is a y intercept that is called c so 1 upon v max now because we are having uh, this uh, as y if you do not remember the line equation you can write it again uh, so it will help you out y is equal to mx plus c fine so if you are having y is equal to mx plus c so this should be y so when you uh, plotting an equation okay so you are when you plotting and curve this will be your y axis so you will have one upon v here you will have x here so one upon s or the substrate concentration here so this will be your x axis this will be your y axis now what else you need uh, you need so you have this as your y axis this is your x axis and this is zero okay so this is the origin of your plot then you have this slope okay when you draw this line so this is actually m value of m or the slope will be km upon v max here then you have the c value also here so this one upon v max will be your c what is c this point is actually called the c c is called the y intercept so the so your line or your plot wherever it will uh, where it will intersect your y axis is called y intercept or the c value and this is actually 1 upon v max from here okay then we also have uh, so actually we get this minus 1 upon km value from the x intercept so this is called the x intercept because because this is a minus value so it will come beyond this zero towards left hand side towards the minus side because this is the minus side of this and this is the plus side uh, okay so of this x axis therefore this will be your x intercept fine so this is the equation this is called lb equation and this plot is called lb plot now what is the importance of this so it is very difficult to determine the v max directly from the plot v against s or the substrate concentration where we are plotting this v against s actually in the michaelis mantan equation mm equation and therefore km cannot be really determined in this way either to overcome these difficulties uh, to remove these difficulties or to overcome michaelis mantan equation can be rearranged in a number of ways and one is actually the lb or uh, the double reciprocal method okay so 
this is the convenient graphical representation okay so this is more much more convenient to find the km and vmax values when we are having a line instead of a hyperbola okay if an enzyme obeys michaelis menten kinetics because uh, only what we have did is we have rearranged the mm equation therefore if any enzyme is following the michaelis menten equation so the same enzyme will give a line equation or line plot here like this uh, so the transform uh, okay so from here michaelis menten kinetics a plot of reciprocal of the reaction velocity that is called uh, one upon v actually or one upon v not as a function of reciprocal of the substrate concentration that is actually the substrate concentration therefore it is called double reciprocal plot because we are taking both reciprocals either the rate and the substrate concentration here one upon s so this transform michaelis menten equation into a straight line equation plot between the reciprocal of v and s is known as this line v with bar plot and this is also known as double reciprocal plot because both the velocity or the rate of reaction and the substrate concentration are reciprocal values or we are taking them as one upon v and one upon substrate concentration so i hope this is understandable if not i will repeat it again uh, if you are having any query please ask me and if you do not have we will move to another rearrangement of the mm equation that is known as hannes plot okay so the two scientists again hannes and wolf uh, again rearrange the same equation mm equation and gave an another equation and plot so if you are not able to understand the transformation of mm equation into okay so harika is actually asking how to evaluate the minus 1 upon km value okay so actually from this plot only you will evaluate this value whatever is the value of uh, substrate concentration here is actually the value of minus 1 upon km here actually this point where it is intersecting your x axis is minus 1 upon km or the x intercept so because this is a very simply drawn obviously you should have some values here over x axis some values here over y axis so whatever is the value of this point where it is intersecting will be the value of your x intercept if not understandable uh, okay so we are having so we always use leninger as reference whenever there is uh, biochemistry okay so uh, you will get some examples from here okay these are simple mm equations they are using uh, right here sorry it is not uh, given okay so no such values are discussed in this text but uh, actually you will have always have uh, values whenever you plot this type of equation so based on upon those values actually you will uh, find the value of minus 1 upon km okay any other queries fine so actually this type of rearrangement was very simple as we have seen from the uh, mm equation itself so if we are having an equation that is called the michaelis menten equation 
we just do the reciprocal we need to find uh, the one upon v value so we can simply rearrange these uh, terms so that we will derive the lb plot and equation now if you need to derive an another uh, plot so you need an another equation and this second equation is called hennis equation okay because there is s now remember there is a trick okay so because this hennis is having this s so always uh, sorry this is having this s so always remember the plot or the equation will have s here okay so this type of equation or this type of plot is actually a plot between s upon v versus s because this is hennis plot and hennis is having s therefore it is s upon v versus s okay okay let me first derive this equation this is the equation actually so this hennis or hw equation hennis wool equation first we need to derive this equation okay so from the previous one okay so this was your l b equation where you were having one upon v km upon v max into one upon substrate concentration or simply this was here plus one upon v max if you are able to understand this rearrangement from the mm equation if you are able to uh, achieve this now what will you do you simply multiply the substrate concentration both the sides so that you can get a new rearrangement that is called hennis wood plot so what will you do because you already have one upon v here so you will multiply with the substrate concentration s to get this value now if you multiply this side with substrate concentration obviously first of all you will have substrate concentration here because there is a plus sign so this one when uh, is multiplied with substrate concentration let me annotate this so okay so first of all you need to do substrate concentration here sorry in text so we you need substrate concentration as simply and you can put your substrate concentration here okay so this will become s upon v because okay now come to this side this side when you multiply this term with substrate concentration this will be cancelled out because you are having already having one value here so this s will be removed because you are multiplying with the substrate concentration here also so this will be cancelled out and because you also have you need to multiply substrate concentration here so you will have substrate concentration as divided by v max so you will have one upon v max into substrate concentration and this term km upon v max will come here simple na this uh, this is understandable only you need to understand uh, okay so for this uh, to derive the hennis wolf's plot or equation first of all you should understand how you derive the lb equation so first of all again we will move to the lenzer where we have this mm equation you need to do reverse so one upon v not you will move this km and substrate concentration up and this v max into s as will come down so that you can resolve this as km upon v max into substrate concentration plus Uh, s upon v max into substrate concentration you will cancel uh, this substrate concentration so you will have km upon v max into substrate concentration or you simply multiply here as one upon substrate concentration so that you will have this as m term you will have the one upon s as x term then you will have this as y intercept or c value one upon v max 
Now, if you are having this, you can simply uh, rearrange it further. Actually, this, this is your LP equation. And when you rearrange it further, you will achieve your Hannes plot. So for Hannes plot, actually you need to multiply both the sides with substrate concentration. So when you multiply in substrate concentration, it will become substrate concentration divided by V, or actually this V naught. Here when you multiply the same value, okay, so this is S, So here actually you are having the substrate concentration. Again, you need to multiply here. So again, oh sorry. So okay. So if you do this rearrangement again, you will achieve at S upon V or V naught. You will cancel this term. So, okay, you will have Km upon Vmax. Now you will move this Km upon Vmax to this side, okay, and you will have one upon Vmax into substrate concentration. Now in this equation actually, when, and actually this is actually called the Hennis equation. And in Hennis equation, you, when you write uh, this equation as a line equation, what you need you need to write it again as y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, so sorry. Now here actually this term, this one upon v max into substrate concentration is mx, and this km upon v max will become your c term. Okay, so this is called y intercept c. And one upon V max is called your slope, and this S is your x axis. So now you will plot your uh, plot your uh, equation in in form of a plot or a, a curve. Then you will plot this S versus S upon V. So see here. Okay, so everything first. So see here, when you plot this equation or Hannes uh, equation in the form of a plot, you will have something like this. So this is called Hannes plot. Here, okay, so let me annotate this plot again. So you will have S as your x-axis, S upon V is your uh, y-axis, therefore it is called and this plot because it is having s therefore you are plotting s versus s upon v okay now okay so one more thing you need to remember from the equation actually this time okay when you are plotting lb uh, equation so in that curve and that plot, you are having this Km upon V max as a slope, but here this is the C value or Y intercept. And here uh, the value of slope or M will be one upon V max because from the equation you will uh, get these values, okay? So here the slope will be one upon V max as can be seen from here. So here it is having M as one upon V max and the C intercept or the Y intercept value as km upon v max. So remember, whatever the value of slope in your LP equation is actually uh, the C intercept here, and whatever the value of uh, C intercept in LP equation or plot is actually the slope here. So this is the main difference between the LP and Hannes uh, wolf plot, okay. Hope this is understandable. If not, please ask your queries, please raise your queries. Okay, these are not very difficult actually when you will uh, try to rearrange them with your own. Okay, so you will easily uh, achieve these equations and when you plot them, you will get these lines, okay. 
in competitive examinations nobody is going to ask you about these plots simply either you will be asked directly uh, what will be the slope uh, what will be the y intercept or x intercept in these equations or plots okay so you need to remember these terms m and c terms these are very important if you want to uh, okay so this hennis wool plot if you want okay so you have m value in your hand so this is called m or the slope 1 upon v max this is called the y intercept that is called c actually so this is m this is c if you want to derive the x intercept also what will you do you will uh, write y as 0 okay so you will put y as 0 and you will solve uh, this so you will put a equal sign here and one minus sign here if you want uh, if you try to solve this equation now you will get the x intercept okay so you will get the value of s whatever uh, is the value of s will be your x intercept so in hannes plot actually uh, the s will be minus m okay fine so we also have one more uh, equation and plot so we need to do one more uh, rearrangement in fact two actually one more is uh, another one is there but is it is not shown in the pathfinder i will also tell you about that particular plot and equation also so before that actually there is one more eddy hofstede plot or equation so first of all you need to derive this equation how uh, you will be able to get this equation okay so first of all you can see that the 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 s upon v and here you will have v upon s so first of all you need to reverse these terms okay so you will have v upon s and simply you will get this as v max upon km so this term can be achieved from the simple uh, reversion but actually this will not be achieved if you if if you will uh, okay if you will, if you simply rearrange this equation so what else we need to do to achieve this term minus v upon km so so this is actually having completely different story you cannot derive uh, this equation from the previous one for this actually you need to do a new derivation okay so first of all what will you do you again move to lb equation and okay so this you can derive from the mm equation and this is double reciprocal plot and this time instead of multiplying with the substrate concentration as we have done in case of hennis plot this time we will multiply both the sides of lb equation um, by v not v max so let me write here so multiply both the sides with a value that is actually v not so this is the initial velocity into v max okay so if you multiply this side with this value okay so you can also write it as because in pathfinder there is no v not so simply you can write it as v into v max both are same actually so for simplicity actually we have play replace this v not as v because this is the initial uh, rate of reaction and this is the maximal rate of any reaction which is achieved by an enzyme okay so first of all what will you do you will put this value you will multiply this side with v upon uh, v into v max so this v will be cancelled out okay so let me annotate something okay so that you are able to understand so when you okay so leave this because in your pathfinder everywhere you will find this v not as v so i'm taking this so when i'm multiplying this term with this 
this v will be cancelled uh, out with this v and simply you will have a v max here okay so you will have a v max here it's hard to write like this so so this side you will simply have a v max fine and this will be cancelled out then again this side when you try to solve uh, this so you need to multiply the same term here and this time this will be cancelled out v max both the time uh, both uh, time and what will you have you have v so you will have velocity v either you say v not or simply v here and you will have velocity v here also so what will be your new equation so this v max will be equal to so v max will be equal to km from here into v upon s right so this is the substrate concentration so you can write this like um, okay so sorry like this and there is plus sign and there is v and actually this is called your so v max is equal to km into v upon s plus v and this is actually called your eddy hofstede plot okay so let me show you v max is equal to km into vs so actually i need to remove this first so this will become here so this v okay so they again rearrange this and further actually so what we have achieved so actually we were having v max okay actually i need to write it again here so what we were having we were having v max is equal to am plus v upon s v upon substrate concentration so i am writing as uh, s plus there is a plus sign oh, sorry there is no plus sign here actually there is a multiplication sign here and you will have a plus sign here actually so plus v okay so uh, okay again uh what will you do so you will have this vs on this side you will move this km okay so this km will go uh this side so this will become uh, v max upon km and because this is um, okay so it is okay so let me another so this time v is equal to you will put v here otherwise you will replace everything from this side so is equal to so when it will go this side this will become minus so minus km into v upon substrate concentration okay and because you are moving this to this side so obviously this will become plus v max so plus v max fine then what will you do in the next step okay in the next step actually
Okay, fine. So this time you will uh, keep this V, this side. Or you can simply write V is equal to V max minus Km into V upon S. Okay, so now you need to solve this equation. Okay, so Okay, so let me another calculation. actually this is uh, creating some problem okay We okay, let it. Uh, okay, so let's. So we'll have v is equal to or instead of v, actually you will uh, put uh, this km upon this side. Okay, so km uh, into v upon s is equal to v max minus v so just i put this this side and i have replaced this okay now what will be uh, what can we do okay so we are having So we need to move this km to this side. Okay, so I will keep v upon s here and is equal to v max. This is a little tricky, so let me solve this minus v. And I'm moving this km to this side. So overall this, because this is a term, I will keep it into a bracket and divide by km fine so now you can uh, achieve this value so this is v upon s and you are having v max divided by km and this is minus obviously so this will have v upon km you can uh, get this equation okay so we need to write this equation as a line equation. So obviously we need to write it as y is equal to mx plus c. So y is equal to mx plus c. So in this equation, when will you see as this will be your y term, this will be your uh, slope m. 
So your slope m will be minus one upon k m, and v will remain your x axis. Okay, and then you have c intercept. So c intercept will be v max divided by k m. Okay, now you need to plot this uh, equation. So I'm moving you to the another. Okay, so here you are having v upon s as your y-axis. Here you are having v as your x-axis. So what you left, you are left with a slope that is having a minus value. So each time you are uh, plotting your curve as a straight line like this. Okay. But this time you are plotting this line as uh, like this. This is inverted line. Okay. So therefore, Actually, this is having a minus sign because this is inverted slope, and this is having some value one upon k m. Okay, now you have two values. This is your c value or the y-intercept that is v max upon k m. Okay, so just uh, the intercept here. If you invert this, you will get the intercept for eddy hofstede plot, and the value that is actually called the v max. Will on the v axis or the x axis is actually your x intercept. Okay, so it is having since it is having inverse slope, therefore it is having a minus sign here. So in the m you will have minus one upon k m as your y intercept. You will have v max upon k m as your x intercept. You will have v max. Okay, so I hope this is understandable. Though it was little tricky to get. The, uh, this plot and this equation. Okay, so if you are not able to understand, simply you need to re remember. You will multiply both sides of LB equation by v naught v max. Okay, or simply by v into v max. So you will get this equation, and with the help of this equation, you will plot a plot. So this is called eddy hofstede plot. Okay, then there is one more plot that is called Einstein uh, Santhal Cornus Bowden plot. So let us move to Cornus Bowden plot if this is understandable. If not, please ask. Okay, so that I can. Guys, if you are having any problem, please ask here because I can derive it again. But because uh, the last one, Eddy Hofstede plot, is quite tricky, you need to remember. Okay, so you need if you. Okay, so last one is actually a Cornish Bowden plot. For that, actually, we need to move to an another screen share. So, okay, so it is here. So this is called uh, Isanthal Cordis Bowden direct plot or uh, uh, plot for this. Okay, so for this equation, for this plot, actually, what you need to do. Uh, okay, so you all know LB equation. Okay, so let me write LB equation for you again. So, or let us move to uh, okay. So another here. Okay, so here, here we are having LB equation. Fine. 
So this time you need to multiply the both the sides. So you need to multiply both the sides with V max only. So if you multiply with V max, what will you have? Because here you are having one. So V max divided by V naught. If you multiply this term with the V max, what uh, you expect from here? So simply these two terms, V max and this V max will be cancelled out. And actually this equation, what will be the derived equation? This is called Cornish Bowden plot, CB plot. So we have rearranged the LP plot into a Cornish Bowden plot. And here V max divided by V is equal to Km upon substrate concentration plus one, simply. Okay, now further, what, when, what can we do? If you think of this Km as zero, okay, so this, if you think like the Km is zero, then this V max will uh, be written as, okay, so let me write in another line. Suppose uh, Km is equal to zero, then what can happen? This V max divided by V divided by V because this will become equal to this Km is zero, so zero upon substrate concentration S plus one. So simply this will become zero and there is a one. So what can you expect this? Uh, you can move this V towards this side so that V will become V max. So V max is equal to V simply. Okay, so this is one thing, but what will you achieve from this plot or this equation that V or the initial velocity is equal to V max Second, when you sup uh, suppose this substrate concentration is zero. So in the second term, you will suppose as the substrate concentration is equal to zero. Now what will happen? So this Km upon zero plus one, okay. So finally, what will happen? You will achieve the substrate concentration, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, we will not suppose this, actually we will do another thing. So this time actually, because we are solving this equation in terms of Km and Vmax, so we need to assume this V max as zero. So let's see what will happen, not the substrate concentration. So assume V max this time as equal to zero. So if this V max is zero, so zero upon V zero will become zero overall. And this will become Km upon substrate concentration plus one. And when you move this one towards this side, this will become Km upon substrate concentration is equal to one. And overall Km will become equal to minus, sorry, equal to minus substrate concentration. Fine. So first of all, you will have V is equal to V max and Km is equal to minus substrate concentration. And when you plot this equation, this equation will be simply between the substrate concentration and the V and see what will happen. Okay, so from the, this one actually. So this is actually called the Eisthan Cornish Bowden plot. And in, in this uh, plot, you can see that this is the substrate concentration over x-axis. Okay, so let me put this. 
So this is your substrate concentration. Obviously, this is showing minus uh, S value because this is zero here. And uh, this will have a minus value this side. This will have a positive value this side. OK. And this is zero. Then you will have a velocity over this axis. And when you will try to find the, uh, the velocity, so you know uh, this velocity will be V max here. And the second thing is the minus S value or this uh, on the substrate concentration axis, X axis, you will get the Km value. So actually, this will simply give you the values of Km and V max. Therefore, uh, this Cornish Bowden plot will be considered as to give the best estimate of um, the either Km and V max of any of the linear transformation methods. So we have studied many linear transformation uh, plots and equations. So this Eistham Cornish Bowden plot is uh, believed to provide the best estimate of uh, the Km and Vmax out of all linear rearrangements. Okay. So we will move again to our point. So whatever we have, what, what, else we have discussed today. So see here. So first of all, we have discussed LB plot. This is called line weaver Burke plot, which has been rearranged. So this equation, first of all, LB equation has uh, is a straight line equation. And it is uh, achieved from the MM equation by rearranging the MM equation. And then we have also rearranged this LB equation to achieve either Hennis plot or Eddie Hofisty plot and Cornish Bowden plot. Okay, so both are, or the, all the three are given here, but actually the third one is not given. Fourth one actually, the Cornish Bowden plot is not given. All the three are given in this uh, book. So I hope you all have the uh, Pathfinder 7th edition. So if not, I will share this PDF also. Okay, so no problem at all. Then there is a term that is called ping pong reactions. Okay, so what are these reactions actually? So when you will read the Leninger, you will find the term ping pong. So when there are two substrates, okay, so what will happen? These ping pong reactions are called double displacement reactions. So in these reactions, actually one substrate will be converted into the product before other substrate bind to the same enzyme. So suppose there is an enzyme and there are two substrates. So the substrate a will be converted into product before the substrate B bind to the enzyme. So these type of reactions are called double displacement reactions because both the substrate need to bind with the enzyme in a sequential manner and only the second substrate will able to bind to the enzyme and first one is released into ping pong product. So, so these ping pong reactions, actually there is no tertiary complex formation. Okay, so and these are called by and these are a type of bi substrate reactions. Okay, so mostly in bi substrate reaction, there is a formation of tertiary complex, but the ping pong reactions or double displacement reactions are exception to these uh, tertiary complex formation actually uh, did not happen in these uh, ping pong reactions. So let us understand what are these reactions in more detail. So let me find. So, oh, I do not know where is this reading actually. Five nine zero. Uh, 
Okay, so not here actually I came further. Sorry, it was given there. If you have any queries, please ask and let me find a term for you. Okay, so two zero seven actually. So I do not know why this is behaving like this. Okay, so it is given here actually. So let me show you. Okay, so suppose here, uh, so this is a simple uh, presentation when there is an enzyme and then the substrate A will come and bind to the enzyme to make up uh, enzyme substrate complex that is called EA. So this A substrate will be converted into the product P. This enzyme will be converted, actually this, there is a modification in enzyme. So the conformational change of the enzyme is represented with an another symbol F. So enzyme E will be converted into F and uh, substrate A will be converted into the product. Product will be released and uh, this enzyme, which is modified actually, F will bind to another substrate B. And then this will form, again make a complex that is a binary complex. This is uh, F the enzyme and B is the uh, substrate, second substrate. Then again lead to the formation of EQ complex. 
So this Q is the product again, second product, and this enzyme will be restored. So actually this type of reactions, when there is a no ternary complex formation, so generally the ternary complex is formed when there are two substrates for the same enzyme. So suppose there is an enzyme, the substrate S1 will bind to the enzyme, make ES1 complex. Substrate 2 will come and bind to the same enzyme as to make an ES1, S2 complex. So this complex is called ternary complex. Then ultimately the two products will be released out of enzyme. Or this ternary complex is formed in the, in the form of EAB, which will be converted into enzyme product P and product Q or from A and B respectively and then they will be released but in ping pong reactions or in double displacement reaction this will not happening and uh, actually so the ternary complex formation depict using the, uh, these nomenclature and ordered by y and these reactions but in ping pong reactions double displacement reaction described in the figure and nomenclature as we have seen from the now uh, what is the use of these ping pong pathways and so when you plot these reactions, double displacement reactions in this, this form, so in form of line plots, so you, if you are having this type of arrangement, all the lines are crossing at a single point or they are parallel lines. So the, the, the crossing actually showing the formation of ternary complex, okay? So here, because uh, this is showing the ternary complex is being formed, but in, uh, in, uh, in double displacement reactions or in, uh, so intersecting lines indicating that there is a ternary complex is formed in the reaction. So this particular point is the ternary complex. Whereas in ping pong reactions, there is no ternary complex formation. So the parallel lines indicate a ping pong or double displacement pathway. So this type of arrangement when there is a parallel lines are actually the double displacement reactions or pathways. Okay, so that's all for today. If you're having any query, please ask me if you are not having. So we will discuss uh, further in tomorrow's class. Okay, we will continue from here. Actually, we need to uh, study effects of pH and temperature which will be the new topic of tomorrow's class. So the effect of temperature and pH on an enzyme catalytic activity or the efficiency. Okay, so that we know that each enzyme is having a fixed pH and temperature range at which it will uh, optimal value of, it will have an optimum uh, reaction velocity. If you move from that uh, point, either direction, this bell-shaped curve, there is a decrease in the catalytic efficiency of that particular enzyme. So this we need to read actually. So it is given here also for different enzymes, the value of optimum pH can vary. Similarly, different enzymes are showing in variation in temperature, but there is a uh, narrow range over which this this enzyme, that particular enzyme, for example, pepsin. Pepsin is having pH of around 1.5, where it is uh, showing optimal activity. Similarly, glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme, it is having some uh, pH optima around 7.8, where it is uh, performing best. If you move or if you decrease the pH or you will increase the pH in either direction from this bell-shaped graph, there is a decrease in efficiency of that particular enzyme. Okay, so the performance of enzyme will be less in either way. If you increase or decrease the pH or the temperature. And if you increase or decrease very much either the pH of temp or the temperature, it will ultimately lead to the denaturation of the enzyme and the catalytic uh, performance is lost overall. Okay. So this type of things can happen in enzymology when you are dealing with enzymes. Therefore, you need to obviously you need to control the pH and temperature of your enzyme. 
Okay, so Nehalika is having one query. She is not able to understand the ping pong reactions. Okay, fine. So actually, there are some reactions, not only some reaction, there are many reactions which are involving the two substrates. Okay. Whenever there are two substrates, okay, so let me move to the portion of ping pong first. So first of all, you need to move here. It is given page number 587 in my Leninger. And actually, this is the seventh edition of Leninger also. So here, if you look into this type of reactions, actually, all the reactions which are shown here are bisubstrate reactions. Bisubstrate reactions in the sense when there are two substrate for the same enzyme. So these substrate can bind to the same enzyme in different ways, which are shown here in the form of four uh, A, B, C, D. Okay. So A is showing that there is an enzyme. There is substrate S1. There is a substrate S2. So first of all, ES1 complex will be formed. Then substrate 2 will come and ES2 will form and ultimately the product will be released. So obviously there is a formation of ternary complex. So this ternary complex formation can be shown Okay, when you plot this uh, first reaction, you will get something like this. Okay, this plot, first plot A. So this is showing, this crossed lines are showing the formation of a ternary complex where the enzyme and both the substrates are bound together. Okay, so this ternary complex whenever will form, it will ultimately lead to the crossing of all the lines show that there is a ternary complex. So these type of ternary complex reactions can be either ordered or random. Ordered in the sense, first of all, the first substrate will come, it will bind to the enzyme, and then the substrate second will come and bound to the enzyme. Random reactions in the sense, either one uh, substrate S1 will come or S2 will come, it can come in a random fashion and bind to the enzyme to make the ternary complex same ternary complex will be formed. Okay, so same is the case here also, enzyme reaction in which the ternary complex is formed, no ternary complex is formed. So this can happen here. So this type of reactions actually are called ping pong reactions. So this nomenclature was given by a scientist called Cleland. Therefore, you can write these uh, same equation in this form with the Cleland nomenclature. Similarly, you can write the ping pong reaction in this fashion. But here, there is a formation of ternary complex. In ping pong reactions, there is no ternary complexes formed. So what will happen actually when there are two substrates, so the first substrate will bind to the enzyme, will make an enzyme substrate complex that is binary only, not ternary. It will lead to the formation of product. The product will be released. Enzyme will be free. Second substrate will come, bind to the enzyme, making again an enzyme substrate binary complex and the, uh, the formation of second product will take place. So simply you can write the same equation in this form as well. So both are same. When you plot both the equations, but they will, uh, okay, so this is for the, when there is a formation of ternary complex, when there is no formation of ternary complex, for example, in ping pong reactions or double displacement reactions, they're called double displacement for uh, the reason only being because when the first substrate is binding, it will first make the first product and then only the second substrate will bind to the same enzyme and then lead to the formation of second product. So what will happen? There is no crowding over the enzyme. First substrate will come, product will be released, then second substrate will come and product will be released. But when there is a formation of ternary complex, both the substrate will bound over the same enzyme and there is a, a clump. It means both the substrate over the same enzyme means there is a crowding obviously. So this is the main difference between a ping pong reaction. Ping pong reaction never lead to the formation of a ternary complex because both the substrate will bind in a sequential fashion. When the first substrate will bind, the first product will release, then only the second substrate will bind to the enzyme. Hope this is clear. <clears throat> okay. So the ping pong is only uh, some term uh, so it is showing that when the first cell substrate is converted into the product, then only the second substrate will come and 
lead to the formation of second product. And these reactions are called double displacement reactions. Okay. So that's all for today. If you still have some query uh, in today's class, actually what we have discussed today, let me conclude today's class. Okay, so today we first have uh, rearranged the Michaelis Manton equation to get uh, some advanced or I can say the convenient graphical representations or the equations. First one was LB that is called line weaver work equation. Then from with the help of this LB equation, we have uh, also achieved this Hennis plot and equation as well as Eddie Hofisty plot and equation. Also, we have discussed one more that is actually called the Cornish Borden or uh, which is shown here. This is actually called the Essential Cornish Borden plot. Okay, so in this plot, you will directly get the Vmax and Km and someone if ask you, it is the best method to represent the Vmax and Km values. So it is considered to give the best estimates of the KM and Vmax of any of the linear transformation methods discussed so far. And I also tell you something about the ping pong reactions or the bisubstrate reactions. So bisubstrate reactions are type of reactions which are having two substrate uh, which will bind to the same enzyme or either one substrate will bind to the enzyme and then second substrate. So these type of reactions are called ping pong reactions or double, displace, double displacement reactions. So the one substrate uh, or the S1 will be converted into the product first before the other substrate will bind to the enzyme. And there is no tertiary complex formation uh, happen in this, these reactions. Therefore, there is no crossing. There will be parallel lines in, uh, in the equation of the plots, or line plots. Okay. So we will meet tomorrow again and we will discuss the effects of pH and temperature over some of the enzymes. Okay, and then we will move to the discussion of inhibitors. So we will discuss, uh, okay, before inhibitors, actually we also have this. So this is also given in your uh, pathfinder. When you turn the page, actually I did not see this. This ping pong reactions are given over the next page. So actually this is called the bi or multi reactant system bi in the sense if there are two react, uh, two reactants or the substrates multi if uh, there are more than two substrates. So uh, simply if you are having the two substrate A and B you can either have this okay so more common is ping pong and then we will discuss the enzyme inhibition so this enzyme inhibition will have uh, competitive, uncompetitive and non-competitive type of inhibitions. So we will discuss them also. And thus we will uh, finish this particular topic from biochemistry. Okay. So thank you all. Thank you for today's class and good night. Take care.